Richard, first half results from Glencore today. Of course, the backdrop is this mega merger we've been talking about all the way from the start of the year. Um, let's just talk first quickly about how the results um, fared, and then let's talk about the merger after that. Yeah, the results were actually not as bad as expected. So their mining performance is the weaker one, and that's as you might expect. We've seen half-year results from all miners showing their greater caution on CapEx, but above all, lower commodity prices, still rising costs, falling demand, all bad news. So nicely into the cycle. So Glencore suffered there as tomorrow. well. So Glencore's no different. But it, its mining result was done nearly a, nearly a third at the EBIT level. However, its trading or marketing activities, as it called them, were down a less, less dramatic 11% on the same half a year ago. But actually, they rebounded nicely from the last half of 2011 by almost 70%. So and we were just looking at the mm. chart pack, weren't we? The actual EBIT numbers going yeah. back sort of 10 or 11 quart, uh, halves now, fairly fairly steady. Proving to be a pretty resilient business. And that's all the kind of adjectives that they lavished on the business in their, their first half results today. So all in all, a, a business that's showing some some benefits of the their, what they call the integrated model of diversification in plain English. And how do those results feed into the, now I guess it's a tit-for-tat negotiating process over this deal? Yes, I mean, it's since the beginning of the year, this, this deal has been dragging on, and that, that looked clever in a funny kind of way, because it tunes out the arbitrageurs. So that, that noise is largely gone until along came Qatar Holding and took now a nearly 12% stake, I think it is, in, in Xtrata. And that's rather quid the pitch for, for Glencore. Um, the results show that actually you would be rather inclined to get on and do the deal now if possible because you've got a resilient business in, in trading and this is an option for extra investors to to get into a bigger but story. But the Qataris have come in and story. said 3.26 well, or whatever it is or we're not playing. Yeah, they're um, holding it to ransom basically. But there's another reason for doing it now which is perhaps not immediately evident from the results and that's because the net debt to EBITDA position looks pretty good at the moment in, in Glencore's case, and that's very important in terms of their credit rating, vital for a trading company. But where, where things may change over the coming year or so, if they were thinking of perhaps pulling back now and coming back in a year's time, is that the Viterra acquisition, their recent acquisition on the agri side, has not come through into those numbers yet. And also Kazink is not fully in there. So that debt position is going to go up and up and up then why is the CEO of uh, Glencore seem to be backpedaling on the deal as a final question? I, I, th I think really just that um, he's got concerns about the greenfield projects of Xtrata and he probably doesn't want to be forced into this. Or d the, the problem is we've got pride on one side and we've got a, a, a sovereign wealth investor that's gone in at a very high price and has lost a bundle of money on it. So we've got two irrational behaviours here and so the, the real sufferer in all of this is actually the ordinary extra investor. Uh, and of course we've got the exchange ratio now at 2.6, so obviously shareholders are saying that it's unlikely to happen and certainly the mood music is heading that way as well. So thank you very much, Richard.